Do you love your job or are you just coasting through until home time? You spend about 30% of your adult life at work, so why not make it count? Careers consultant Laurel McClay is here with five things you need to tick off your career bucket list. Laurel, good morning. Good morning, Paul. What's this actually about? Well, what this is about is I think that a lot of people go through their career by accident rather than design. And like you said, there's such a massive amount of time we spend at work, so why can't we actually do something that we love? And the career bucket list is sometimes there's things that we just have to do that will make our career and our lives at work more interesting and they're not what you think. You Does know? it depend? Does it depend why you're working? Because many people see work as merely a means to an end. So they really do... See, I hate that phrase, work-life balance. I was going to say exactly the same thing. It, it implies that work has nothing yeah. to do with life. It's just life <laughs> balance, really, isn't it? But for many people, they they really do live for the weekends. They live for just getting home and they're just using work as a mean to that end. And Sunday nights are hell for them. Yeah. 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 Tell me about it. <laughs> um, so, so what you're saying is, you know, why would you commit so much of your life to that? Why would you not just do something that you like? Well, yes. And shall we talk about those five things? Does that sound minute, like, okay. In a minute. I just don't feel we're quite ready to launch into them yet. <laughs> um, what are the reasons that stop people? I think the biggest reason that stop people, there's two things. The first thing is they just don't back themselves, you know? It's like, mm. I couldn't possibly do that. I don't know. So it's too hard, line of least resistance. Well, it's kind of like, yeah, status quo is our biggest enemy, isn't it? Uh, the second thing is they're just not clear on what's available to them out there. And uh, we are so moving to what we call like portfolio careers, uh, mm. freelancing, entrepreneurs, and people are still thinking they need to go and look at Seek for a nine-to-five job. It's funny, isn't it? Because surely it is easier now than it's ever been. Because even when I was young, and I I'm not that old, but even when I was young, the idea was you found a job and you stayed there for life. And if you were very lucky, you moved up the ladder. Um, but obviously in the last, particularly in the last 20 years, that just isn't the way the employment market works anymore. It just can't work like that anymore. Well, I think the other thing is, as we've talked about before, is that um, if someone stays in a job too long, it actually counts against them yeah. rather than for them. Yeah. All right. Uh, but we all know people like in our past, like I, my mother was an expert at making cigarettes, you know, and literally <laughs> You went, if you went to that school and you weren't rich, you weren't rich if you went to that school, you ended up in the cigarette factory and yeah. that was it. That was your life. Um, all right. These are the five things which what? These are five tips to help us find the right career? Well, that's probably the best way for you to frame it. Well done. <laughs> Good for me. Found that one by luck. Um, all right. So, so for people who really aren't doing the right thing and aren't fulfilling their lives, these are the five tips career-wise. Number one. Okay, number one is know your superpower and know your weakness. And so I think we have our greatest strength, but it's also our greatest weakness. Mm -hmm. But so many of us don't actually bother spending the time to find out what that is. You can ask people you know, you can look at the, the common themes in your life, and there's a myriad of um, diagnostic tools available, Gallup Strengths Finders. So know what you're good at, know Just what know, you're bad yeah, at. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, number two, learn from something mm -hmm. you're not so proud of. Yeah, well, I think this is the whole thing about embracing failure. And Carol Dweck, who wrote Mindset, has really nailed this because she talks about people who've got fixed mindsets and growth mindsets. Growth mindset people are those who are happy to fail. And so be happy to put on your CV what you might not be proud of. I actually went into business with someone who'd been made bankrupt before. Uh, the reason I did that was because I thought she ain't going to do it again. <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of very famous business people will tell you you learn much more from failures than you ever do from successes. That's right. All right, number three, stop over apologize. We do that, don't we? New Zealand is a big over well, I, I think New Zealand, but also globally. So there's this really great um, commercial from a hair company. I think it's Strong, Save Strong. Um, Google it. And uh, basically it's just got countless examples of women saying sorry. We say sorry when we accidentally bump someone. We say sorry when we actually don't need to say sorry. So mm. the thing is, save sorry for when you actually do need to yeah, say sorry. Then it's sure got some gravitas. Those times yeah. are going to come. Um, all right, number four, <laughs> have a couple of specific career advisors. So that one's obvious, isn't it? No people that you can go to. Well, I, actually, they're talking more about sort of uh, informal ones. And I think that's interesting because we've got to be really, really wary of well-meaning bad advice. Mm. I think it's a little bit like predictive texting. You know, people tell you something and it's just not what you actually want to hear. Yeah. And sometimes they don't actually have the whole picture and aren't giving you the right advice. Okay, so if you're time. getting advice, make sure you're getting advice from someone who actually knows what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Don't just go to the line of least resistance. And finally, learn to sell. People do not sell themselves, People do, do not sell themselves. This is my big bugbear here. You know, we've got to get out there and be a little more shameless. And uh, it's just something that we don't do as Kiwis. And Fantastic. we're always selling. We're always Fantastic. selling, aren't we? Laurel, that turned into something of an interview. And I'm very, very, <laughs> very proud of you. Careers consultant Laurel McClay, thank you very much thank for joining Paul. us again. See you back soon. Soon. 